What's up, everybody? Elder Derek Strickland here, uh, right here on the Derek Strickland Ministry YouTube channel. Um, man, this is a video that I never thought that I would be sitting down to make. Um, this video is uh, one that um, is truly a, a testimony. Um, and I just want to take you through um, my journey with cancer and um, just give you all some insight into um, just how everything unfold uh, for some of you all um, some of you all don't even know what was going on uh, some of y'all this would be your first time hearing about it um, and you know it may be a shocker to some um, even to some of my closest friends um it's amazing um of you know just what an individual goes through and the mindset that uh you may have as you're going through it as it relates to um talking about it openly um those that know me i am a very like ultra uh uh, private person right like if I don't feel led to say something to you about it that's just what it is um, you know I, I you know so uh, I, I truly grew up from you know uh, what goes on in my house stays in my house like we, we don't volunteer information <laughs> this is just how, who I am um, life over the years has taught me to be this way and this has become a part of just my uh, core beliefs, I guess, as, as it relates to my personal life. It's personal and um, personal means something. I mean, you know, this is something that I that is mine. But um, I felt that uh, this situation uh, is imperative that I talk to you and give you all the ins and outs of everything. So if anybody, anybody been following me right here on this channel, um, knows that I've been doing a five o'clock in the morning prayer for the last, maybe going on a month and a half. Right. And God has been blessing, um, in this prayer. Um, but I have been dealing with like a bad cough. Like my cough has been really bad. And, um, you know, some of the, the uh, subscribers have been like, yo, Derek, hey, man, you need to get that cough looked at. You know, my wife is feeling the same way. And, uh, you know, just some people that I, I talk to frequently, you know, saying, hey, you need to, you know, get that cough looked at. So um, I need to do a checkup anyhow. Plus, it was time to get some FMLA paperwork renewed um, because for some other reasons that I, some other ailments that I deal with. But not it's not as severe as cancer believe me um so uh i went to the doctor and to do the checkup and to talk about the renewal of my fmla paperwork and we you know we talked about that got that taken care of but also um i told her that uh well i had told my wife before i said hey say babe like when i go to the bathroom and urinate there's some discomfort there and um it's it's not like it's hurting or it's not like it's a, a big hurt or anything like that but there's some discomfort and um it doesn't burn or anything like that so it's, don't even go there uh but there's like hmm that's different right she was like well tell the doctor uh when you go to your doctor's appointment so i go to the doctor's appointment this is July 28th, uh, I believe, I believe it's the July 28th. Let me, let me look at my phone real quick. Uh, July 27th, that Thursday, I believe. July 27th, right. Goes to the doctor and, um, you know, we're talking about everything, talking about, you know, my issues that, um, I have FMLA paperwork around and, you know, just doing some checkup on there. She, Telling me some more things that I need to do just to, you know, be a little bit more comfortable uh, when these type of things happen, when these uh, flare-ups happen. And so um, I get around to telling her, 
you know, about, you know, the discomfort I feel when I urinate. And, man, she automatically jumped right on it. You know, kind of, everything else kind of took like a back seat. And um, she was like, uh, all right, I want you to do a urine test. You know, go, you know, urinate in this cup. <laughs> and uh, we're going to get some blood because we need to check your prostate. And she looked at my chart and said, oh, yeah, the last time we checked your prostate was back in 2000. So, um, I mean, 2020, I'm sorry, not 2000, 2020. And it's been four years since we did anything checking your prostate. And um, so uh, I go, you know, do the urine test and I go and get the blood drawn. So, um, you know, everything going, you know, normal. You know, I'm not hurting or anything like that. And... Um, I'm working. This is a Saturday. I happen to have to work on that Saturday. And um, here I get a text message saying your test results are in. So I'm like, okay, let me, do, let me open this up and see what's going on. So I open up the test results and I see on my test results that I am, uh, I am uh, good to go on a urine test. Right, everything was clear. It was nothing positive. Everything was negative. Right, so in test results, negative mean good and positive mean bad. Right, <laughs> so um, everything was good. But when it got down to my prostate, my PSA, uh, it was it was shaded in red. And I looked at the range of the blood test, and it says um, I need to be within zero within zero to four, right? Zero to four, I need to be in between that range of zero to four. This, I'm not for sure which way it's pointing, but uh, this right here, this right here is my results that I got. Take a look at that. A 76 is what my results came back. So at this point, I'm I'm in full panic mode on the job. Code. What do this mean? Right? At this point, I'm even hating that I even told anybody about what I was feeling, right? Cuz I don't know what this means. So I did what I please I urge anybody not to do. I copied the whole test with all of the words and everything and pasted it into Google. And the first thing that came up was cancer. Cancer. So all kind of alarms are going off right now. Like, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little weak in the body all of a sudden. You, your mind, your mind is a battlefield. Right? And if you don't fill your mind with positive thoughts, positive affirmations with the word of God, the enemy is going to have a field day with your thoughts, with your mind. So first thing I do after that, I copy everything and send it to my wife. And, you know, she doesn't. I'm, let me see. What, what, what was her response? Uh, she said, I have no idea what this means for the test, whatever it is. Dr. Duran will explain. Right? So she, she is not tripping at that moment. Um, my wife is always level-headed. Right? Like, it, my wife is level-headed. It ain't over to the fat lady sings. Uh, you know, it ain't over to the saints win. And if the saints not winning, guess what? It's not over. That's the type of mindset my wife got. So I thank God for Tasha, man. I thank God for my wife. So, um... That was sad. That was Saturday. Um, Monday, I think it was Monday. Somehow we got a, a appointment with my doctor, and my doctor was like, "Yo, this is not good. This a seventy six. You're so young. You know, she was like a seventy six. This is." Derek, she was like, Derek, I'm not a urologist, but this is telling me that this is cancer. This is cancerous, right? And she kept on reiterating that I'm not a urologist. So, you know, you can't take this at, 
you know, you know, as what it is. She said, but this is telling me this is cancerous. And then she proceeded. At that point, I lost it again, you all. I lost it again. Um, so much and so they had to go get my wife kind of like reel me in. Right? Um, so during this time, I'm thinking about my wife. I'm thinking about my daughters. Man, my wife and my daughters are everything to me. Like, I thank God for being an elder inside of the Church of God in Christ. I thank God for the many titles that I, I have worn within the church. I thank God for the titles and stuff that I've worn um, as it relates to doing union work, um, being a part of executive teams, um, any accolades that I might have gotten online, you know, uh, um, just any any awards that I, I've gotten, I thank God, I thank God for that. But for the titles that I really, really care about. Above all of those, it's the title of husband and father. Those are the titles that I care about. And at this point, the only thing that's going through my mind is that I'm not going to be able to be a husband to my wife. And I'm not going to be able to be a father to my children if I'm gone this early in life. And ultimately realizing that I have no control. The scripture says, the Lord God giveth, and the Lord God taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There's nothing at this moment. It tells me just how fragile and just how not in control I am over my own life. And little did I know that the scripture that says uh, his strength it's made perfect in my weakness was getting ready to unfold in my life. 76 off the chart. So now when I tell you, when I always heard people say, this is my darkest hour, I'm understanding what it means when someone says in my darkest hour. Uh, the lady says in a song, uh, uh, you'll be a, a very strong tower in my darkest hour. Uh, the negative thoughts that crept in, right? Like, this is what preachers and sometimes people in the church won't tell you. There were so many different negative, dark thoughts that were crossing my mind. Like I was preparing to die. Literally preparing to die. Getting stuff together like 401ks and pension plans and getting ready to get all of this information right to make sure that Tasha knows what to do. Because surely, and, and here's the thing, she had already, the doctor had already told me that prostate cancer is curable. Like she started talking about radiation and chemo and that kind of tripped me out. Um, then she talked about just removing my prostate, that tripped me out. So much and so that I had even blocked out that it was curable. Man, Satan, Satan would get in any kind of way to, to distract you from the blessings that you already have. I think it was uh, my former pastor, um, uh, Pastor Adams, said that uh, healing belongs to the believer. I can hear him, I can see him saying that now healing belongs to the believer. So after this, uh, she says that you need to set up an appointment with a urologist. And we, we do that. That appointment was on the 2nd of August. But in between time, um, I'm dealing with a brand new pastor. And uh, we thank God for Pastor Amok and First Lady uh, September Goodwin. Good people. Good people. Um, and I give him a call because it's, it's, it's the only, it's only right thing to do as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm, I'm under his leadership. So I, I break it down to him and let him know, Hey pastor, I'm asking you to keep this to yourself. Uh, I don't want to have to deal with any, um, any of the sad side talk 
that happens from time to time when people find out that um, you're going through a sickness. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to just leave that right there. I didn't want to have to go through any of the sad talk that people find out when certain people find out that you're going through sickness, you know, that you have to deal with. So I told them that and I kind of broke it down a little bit more in depth what I actually meant. And him and first lady was like, all right, you know, and to this moment right now, I I have no reason to believe that they ever told anyone what, what I was going through. And, uh, but what he did do is <laughs> the, the brother began to pray, him and his wife, pray for me. And I felt so much better behind that prayer. And um, I went on, you know, went on with my, with my doings, <laughs> went, went on to work. And even behind the prayer, it's still a fight for the mind, right? You can pray until you're blue in the face. There's still going to be a, a vying or a fight for your mind. I believe the scripture said that the flesh wars against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. There still was a fight. So just dealing with uh, my day-to-day -day actions, dealing with uh, my day-to-day -day responsibilities as an a executive union board member, um, you know, it kind of helped me get my mind off of myself. But at times I'm dealing with a lot of people, um, problems and was going through my own problems. Um, then it came time where, uh, it was time for the state convocation and the state convocation is like a time where everybody that's in our jurisdiction comes together and, uh, there are people getting ordained and missionaries getting licensed and, uh, you got guest speakers coming in from out of town. Then of course we got our, our bishop, the greatest bishop in the whole wide world, uh, the bishop, uh, James Drew shared the, uh, presiding bishop over the church of God of Christ worldwide. Um, he capped it off that Sunday, but throughout that service, and I know I'm dealing with this situation and throughout this week, I'm dealing with this situation, um, that, you know, this is it as it relates to cancer. Um, Bishop Littleton preached. And he talked about his gift. He was gifted with the gift of laying on of hands, like healing. And um, he called for a prayer line. And man, I jumped out of my seat into that prayer line so fast that it wasn't even funny. Um, he, he got to me. He laid his hand. There you go. Glory. He laid his hands on me. And when he laid his hands on me, he leaned down and he whispered in my ear, God has already heard your prayers. God has heard your prayers. Man. God has heard your prayers. Man. He heard your prayers. In Jesus. Man, I, I melted. I melted. I melted. Man, look at here. Mm. Even in that, I still came home. And it was still a battle for the mind. It was a battle for the mind. And not knowing the, 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 uh, you know, not knowing what's getting ready to happen. It's just crazy. Like the thoughts that I was having, like thoughts of leaving videos for my children, letting them know, you know, certain things and thinking about, you know, as they progress, what type of advice would they make? They may end up needing, especially my daughters, as it relates to choosing a, a, a husband or or something like that. I guess that's just the way my mind went, you know, like leaving videos for all of my friends, letting them know that I love them, you know, individually, and just really my mind went that way. So the second came around, and um, I went to the doctor to the specialist 
and the specials was like, um, yeah, man, I'm looking at your numbers. Uh, for all intents and purposes, yeah, this is cancer. You know, that's what this is pointing towards. And he says, we're going to have to set up a biopsy so that we can uh, take 12 pieces of your prostate and, you know, put it on in the lab. And then we will officially be able to tell you that it's cancer after we test your prostate. And then we'll go into treatment, uh, how we're going to, how we plan on treating this. Um, he didn't get too off into the treatment, but, you know, radi radiology or, uh, or uh, radiation or, or chemo or something they were saying, um, or even possibly removing the whole prostate. Uh, I'm tripping. So he does a rectal exam, which of course you know your boy wasn't even trying to have that happen, right? And um, he did that. My wife stepped out the room because of course that's a that's an image she don't need to see. <laughs> <laughs> so she steps out the room. He kind of, she comes back in after he's done, and um, he said, "Well, um, I really didn't feel anything no different. You know, I didn't really feel your whole prostate, but um, my nurse is gonna come in and do some type of swabbing down there, so to make sure, um, you know, no infections or nothing is gonna happen between now and the time that you are um, having your your biopsy." So. Um, she comes in with like a little swab. I mean, it probably was no bigger than this. It looked like a Q-tip, right? And uh, she said, "Well, Mr. Strickland, we need you to drop drop the pins again, cause I I got to uh, I got to do this." And when I tell you, it hurt it. Now that right there, and I don't tell you this to scare you for anybody that uh, have to go through through this. That little swab hurt it bad. And she's talking about, you're so tight. I'm like, what you think? It, I'm supposed to be tight. <laughs> this ain't what you thought. And then she she gonna look at my wife and say, well, you, you, yeah, I guess we would be concerned if you wasn't tight, right? So, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, right. Um, so uh, she goes out. He comes in. To talk about the biopsy and then he said well hold on let's do this let's take one more test one more test um and i this time i want it done within our laboratories in our system you know not the primary care doctor system but within our system this is what we do right so um i go uh maybe tuesday monday tuesday one of the one of the two days I think it was Tuesday. I go and I take my, get my labs. So as I'm going to the lab, uh, the young lady, young African-American uh, female, um, she comes in and she, she's giving me uh, my, she, she was like, I want to verify your birthday. When's your birthday? And I told her a wrong birthday. I was like October 15, 82 or something like that. I said, just to see what she's going to say. And she says, that ain't, that ain't your birthday. So I started laughing. She started laughing. I said, I'm just testing you to make sure you, you just don't be back here willy-nilly with anybody's blood. So I give her my birthday. She said, all right, that's it right there. And um, I said to her, I said, I do have one question. I said, you don't have to answer this question. You know, you can tell me none of my business, whatever. But I, I do want to ask you, do you believe in prayer? Do you believe in prayer? And that young lady looked at me and said, I most certainly do. And I said, well, I need you to touch and agree with me that these numbers from this test is going to show up the right way. I don't need any more bad news. And I told her what my numbers were beforehand. She's like, oh, my God, yes, that was bad. You know, and she she proceeded to say, all right, what what? arm do you want so the right arm right in my mind i'm on i'm like the right hand of fellowship the right arm is the strongest arm take it out of this one right here and um she took it out and i seen her like stick me with the needle on, and then i'm like you know i said when you gonna start it's like sir we already in and you know we laughing and stuff and um i left out of there feeling good 
I asked her, I said, um, when will I get the results? And she was like, uh, tonight. I was like, cool. So I go home. I kind of get lollygagging around, not doing too much of nothing. And um, and then I, I think I just skipped over the part <laughs> where I think I really had COVID, right? Even though uh, my, my uh, test results came back negative, I fell down coming away from the Holy Convocation. I think it was going around and some more people that I know actually uh, tested positive. So even through all of that, right? So dealing with feeling bad and bad news and possibly uh, having cancer and all this type of stuff. I'm dealing with all that. So that leads up to the getting the blood. So I'm at home and I'm waiting. And probably around nine o'clock, here comes test results. And these test results come back and they ain't saying nothing about prostate. Nothing about prostate. It's got everything to do with my calcium and cholesterol and blood sugar and all of these different things. And all of the numbers were reading good. So another test result come back like one minute after that one. I'm looking at those results. All of that stuff looks good, right? I'm used to this. Like I'm not used to getting bad news when it comes down to my health. Other than, Derek, you need to lose weight. That's the only thing I ever got. So, it might have been 20, 30 minutes, seemed like maybe an hour. Somewhere within an hour later, it come this third result. And then when I tell you that that email popped up and my heart dropped, because everything in me knew that this was the test results. And remember, this is what the results said right here remember see that that's what the results said from before 70 out of from zero to four i had a 76 point whatever that is right there i open up the the link and i go to my my chart and this <laughs> this is what it said Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Man, when I tell you how grateful and thankful I am that whatever God did between then and now, man, who wouldn't serve a God like that? I heard one bishop say, that was then, but this is now. A 0 0.8, what is it, 2? Oh my God. I want you to know, if you're dealing with bad news, first things first, go to God in prayer. Second thing, surround yourself with positive people. Oh my God, surround yourself with people that's going to feed you positivity. That's going to not allow you to sink all the way down in your darkest hour. Oh my God. And trust God. Man, it's more, it's, it's easier said than done for some of us. But man, trusting God throughout the process. I had uh, uh, pastors reach out to me and say, hey man, uh, everything going to be alright. Man, Pastor Adam reached out to me and said, man, everything's going to be all right. In the midst of of, of just me and being in, in negative situations, um, he reached out and he said, don't forget, this is curable. I had forgot even that it was even curable, right? I didn't even want to go through the situation. I was like, yeah, it's curable, um, but we're talking about through medicine and things of that nature. I didn't even want to go through that. He said, hey, man, don't forget this curable. Right? And I'm like, God, I want you to completely heal me. Right? And that's in that, when I was in that stage. And man, my wife came in before we went to the thing. I, I forgot to add this. Man, I was coming home from work and I'm kind of tired, man. She met me in a garage. And this is not, this is out of my wife's character. She met me in a garage. And when I say she slapped, you hear that? Man, she, 
the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh my goodness. Man. Pretty man, she did that and the attitude was like going about your business, man. Going about your business. Man, thank God for a praying wife. Thank God for pastors that care about me enough to encourage me. Thank God for uh uh just uh having a positive uh influences in your life. Man, we are thanking and praising God for the healing. Uh, for those of you all out there that are dealing with cancer, we're praying for you. All right. We're praying that God will continue to do what it is that he's going to do and that, um, you know, that you hold on and that you think positive. All right. So this is my cancer story. Um, just day before yesterday, the doctor called me talking about. Uh, yeah, my doctor wants you to schedule your biopsy a day ahead of time. I'm like, what? You know, I'm like, you tripping? I, then it dawned on me, they, ain't, they haven't looked at my chart. I, I said, oh, you haven't looked at my chart. And she was like, hold on, let me look. I said, yeah, I got some new test results in. Hold on, let me let me look at this. And uh, she was like, oh, <laughs> I guess you don't want a biopsy. I say no, I do not. She said, "Let me, let me, let me go talk to, uh, let me go talk to the, uh, to the doctor." And she, she um, said, "I'll give you a call back." She calls back in about an hour, and says, uh, "This is Derek Strickland." Yes. He said, "All right, good news. The doctor said you have been, hallelujah, you are all clear." And he will see you next year. Man, I thank and praise God for doing what it is that he did for me. That, that he healed me. That he made ways for me. That he showed me himself that he is a healer. And it's my prayer for you that you know God as a healer. That you know God as a way maker, a provider. Man, I thank God for what he's done for me and my family. And I pray that God will do the same thing for you. And know this, even if he don't do it, he is able. But this is my cancer story. This is my healing story. Right? If you're watching this and you want to be a part of our uh, morning prayer, subscribe to the channel. Right? We want to be here for you. We want to provide a place where you can come and receive prayer. A place where you can come and uh, uh, you can come and be with uh other people that love you and, and care for you. Alright? So, subscribe to the channel. Smash this, um, the like button. Share this video. Man. And I pray that this, this video, this testimony has blessed you. Enough to let you know that God is not a respectable person. That if he did it for me, he can do it for you. It's Elder Derek Strickland. As always, my wish for you is that you are be blessed. And then God give me a blessing. See you guys on the